Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm planting up these tall black containers with a little bit of fall color. I actually haven't used these containers yet this year. They were just sitting in our barn. I used them last year over by our fireplace area. They're made by Maine. I got them from Plow and Hearth. Um, so they were self-watering containers. I took the insert out because I feel like um, hooking them up onto our drip system will work better for us. So that was really easy to take out. And then I went ahead and they're plastic, so they're nice and lightweight. I drilled four drainage holes on the bottom for good drainage. I'll run my drip tubing up through one of the holes, um, which I do have out here. So I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, and then I did a little bit of maintenance in terms of spray paint. Um, so on any container that's like this, like a color, like our True Drop self-watering containers, I did this as well on them. We have such hard water that it just works best for me to just do a quick coat of spray paint. This is a matte hammered black is what this is called, Rust-Oleum brand. Um, no amount of CLR, lime away, vinegar, industrial solvents takes away the hard water on our containers. I've tried everything. Um, this is just way quicker and I only have to do it once a year. It makes the pots look bright and shiny and brand new as well. So let me grab my soil, which I have in my trailer right over here. and We'll get them filled up really quick. Oh darn, it's gonna take a little bit more than one full bag, but I brought three over, so I think we'll be good. Oh, I forgot to put my, I forgot to put my drip tubing up through the bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my drip tubing up through the bottom of this one, then I'll pour this soil into here, and then I can expose the hole on the bottom of this one. Shoot! All right, well, darn. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to pour this soil into this container. And you can see that I've already got it ready. So I've got two half gallon per hour emitters on the end of each one of these. Typically I run the drip tubing up through the bottom and then I do this afterward, but I was trying to be like ahead of the game this time, which maybe wasn't beneficial. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can find a drain hole here. Still a little soil left. I think I got it. Yes. Oh, I got them all dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to wipe them down from my handprints. So I'm using the Espoma organic potting mix and I did fill the containers all the way from top to bottom. I don't necessarily think that these annual plants need this much room for root growth. Um, but in this case, because these containers are not very wide and they absorb a lot of heat with the color that they are, I feel like it helps with moisture retention, keeping the roots cooler, and then there's more nutrients for the plants to uh, draw from. If you've got big, massive containers, I don't think there really is anything wrong with putting a layer of something at the bottom, so long as you give your plants ample room for root growth. Um, in this case, I also think that having soil from top to bottom helps with weight, um, because these can tend to get a little bit top heavy, and where I'm putting them, they're completely exposed to wind. So I think that in this case, it really helps to have soil from top to bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my slow release fertilizer because we're still early enough in the season um, I feel like even just one application will be perfect because this lasts for like six to eight weeks I'll still use my water soluble fertilizer once a week um, until it gets really cool and then we will back off a little bit um, but this will just help the plants get going so I'm gonna just kind of mix this in with my hands just in the top couple of inches here and then I'm gonna start with my purple fountain grass so these are almost the same size. I wanted to have them as matching as possible. They are in two different pots because they actually came in four inch size pots. They were in this size of container and I've had them in my greenhouse all season long. So I had to move them up in pot size uh, and I just had these like random containers hanging out um, and they have grown beautifully. So I think they're gonna kind of be like instant impact. Look at that, look at the roots right there. They look really good. It's really encouraging. Now these are gonna be backed up against a fence and an arbor. So I'm gonna put my centerpiece toward the back so I have more room for flowers around the front. Whew. Let's see. See that the best angle is facing forward. That looks good from here. Yeah, that looks really pretty. I think these will look really cute with some pumpkins around the base of them, some squash. I grew a little bit of pumpkins um, this year, like the little baby ones, but I didn't grow any big ones this year. We had a lot going on this spring and um, a lot of different other planting projects that I didn't get around to planting my pumpkins until really late. I've got some like random varieties, but none of them are really big. Okay, 
So now I need to decide. I know I'm not gonna be able to fit all of these things in these containers. I just brought over what I thought was pretty. I did wanna show you this because this is a new sedum coming out next year. It's called um, Rock and Grow Boogie Woogie. It's actually a hardy sedum zone three through eight, I believe. Yeah, so hardy to negative 40. So this is one I can use in this container. It's got a weed growing in it. And then I can pop it out and use it in my landscape. Um, they grow about six to eight inches tall and then they'll spread out like a foot and a half. So I think what I'm gonna do is use this as sort of a spiller. I was thinking about using this, but I think that this would overtake the container. It's already huge. This is a silver bullet artemisia. I love this plant for fall containers in particular, but I don't know that it's appropriate in this case. I kind of want more flower color. So I'm gonna take one of these out of the, its container. Look at the really pretty yellow blooms too. I just love the variegation. I think it's so pretty. And I'm gonna see if I can split it because I don't really need something this big in each container. So I'm just feeling around with my fingers to see where a good split might be. I think like right in here, kind of have these right there. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in the front of the container, just like that. I may need to add a little bit more soil. Okay, let's grab the other one. You can't split all plants like this, unfortunately, but sedums are really resilient and take to splitting really well. Okay, so since this sedum looks quite a bit better than this one, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one out because it's still a really nice plant. I'm gonna split the other one that I have sitting here and I'm gonna use the good part of that sedum for the container and then put the other two pieces together in a pot and I'll probably plant them out in the landscape because that was the plan anyway. So let me split this one real quick. Okay, so now I'm gonna just repot these other two halves and any pieces that come out too, you can lay on top of the soil and kind of just poke into the soil a bit and they should root as well. Okay, so I've got my good piece here. There, that looks a lot better, I think. Okay, so I think the next thing I'm gonna put in is this Super Bell's Grape Punch. Look how pretty that is. I still love to use purple. I try to do dark purple in uh, fall type arrangements rather than like lavender that seems more springy. So I'm gonna just pop this one in right next to our sedum and that'll look gorgeous. And then right toward the back of that, I'm gonna use one of the flambe yellows because these grow upwards of 14 inches, so that will kind of fill in the side right here. And then I'm gonna mirror the same thing on the other side of that container. And I'm kind of realizing that I used kind of both smaller pieces in this one of sedum and the grass, but these should take off quickly and catch up pretty fast. Okay, so this is kind of funny. I've got um, one of these, this is called a campfire flame. I have no tag on it. I used one of these in my last fall container. I think what I'm gonna do is actually swap this with this. And I'll, I'll explain why here in a second. This is gonna go on the other side of the grass, right here. Boy, one of these days I'll have like my design completely planned out. I don't even know what that would be like. Okay, so the reason I moved that yellow flambe over here is because I think I wanna use one of the orange. This is a Dreamsicle Super Bells on that side, and I didn't want too much orange together on one side. So we'll pop this one in right here without wrecking our sedum maybe. Yeah. Let me see how that looks. Oh, that's really pretty. Don't you think that's pretty? Fairly simple, I mean, I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six plants, which you don't have to use that many. But I figure these grasses, they will grow because they do have, you know, about a month of like consistently warmer temperatures, but we're already cooling down. Like I can wear a sweater in the morning here already, which is kind of atypical, um, but I'm not complaining. But I don't uh, plan on these purple fountain grasses getting as big as they would, like say in my summer containers that I plant in uh, end of April, they get enormous because they have all season to grow. So I think, you know, in fall and spring, I've said it a million times that you can fudge and you can put way more in a container than you would be able to for a summer type container. So now I'm basically, I'm gonna move these apart a little bit. So there's some distinction. And so you can't tell the size difference of the grass quite as much. Um, I'm gonna mirror the same thing. So the dream sickles will be here and the flambe and then our purple and uh, our bidens will be on this side. So let me do that quick. These are such nice big plants already. 
love that. I've got my emitters here. I try to kind of split the distance here and do one on each side. Got our Bidens, which these, and I'm not sure I said, but these will grow and fill in kind of like the straw flowers will. So our super bells, this is probably all the height they'll get and they'll start to droop over and these will kind of start to fill in the back. They'll be a little bit hidden, especially on this one right now. Then we've got a dreamsicle super bells. That one's beautiful. And our flambe yellow. And then I kind of feel around with my fingers and make sure that all the root balls have soil all the way around them. Make sure everything's tamped in really nicely. Then we're gonna go ahead and move these up to the front where they're gonna live for the next few months and I'll get them all hooked up to our drip system. All right, we got the containers up in front of the house and I think that they are the perfect size. They almost bring a feeling of grandeur to this spot and it makes me realize how much I missed not having containers out here all summer long. We had them out here last year, a different style of container, but I like this one better, I think. I like the um, square and the tall, like the height of this one. Very sunny up here, but the plants will love it because these are all full sun lovers, but I'll try to get some pictures when it's a little more shady so you can see a little more detail on the plants. Um, for those of you guys who wondered, we did bring them up here in this gorilla cart that has removable sides that just lower so you can put your pots up there and then put the side back up, bring them to where you need to go and then easily remove them. I did want to uh, talk a little bit about how I'm going to hook them up onto our drip system. We have um, brown drip tubing running through these flower beds right here. And last year I hooked our containers up to drip. So when I put them away at the end of the year, I just put a little cap on the end of my quarter inch tubing right here. So all I need to do is grab my tubing from the container and hook them together using this quarter inch straight coupler right here. So I'm just going to cut the little um, cap off of it and just put them together and then they're good to go. Like I'll water them in today. In fact, I brought my hose up and then after that, they're gonna be completely uh, self-sustaining minus it, their weekly fertilizer. All right, so that one's all hooked up. Now I'm gonna go hook this other one up. Okay, now they're both hooked up onto the drip system. So we'll go ahead and get them watered in and then we'll be good to go. And I just think it's such a good look up here and I think we've got them done early enough to where we'll actually see some really good growth on them. So by the time like it's legitimately fall outside, we'll have some really nice draping and a lot of color. And then I can set a couple of pumpkins right here. It's gonna be so cute. Anyway, I hope this video was inspirational to you guys, just seeing some fun fall color. Um, it's about time where you can start looking for it down at your garden centers. I know that uh, my parents' garden center, they're just starting to bring in some new things like this and it gets really exciting again, just like spring. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.